everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now today we are going to be revisiting my lovely coin folders. We're searching for 50 Ps. Now for those of you who are not in the United Kingdom, this is about as good as it gets for us in terms of coin hunting and looking for rare valuable shrapnel in our change because unfortunately we don't have any silver left in circulation. So I've ordered in a giant bag of 50 Ps from my local post office. The last few times I've done this uh, and ordered these bags and they've been complete brand new bags of various different designs so I haven't been able to make a video like this where we get a potluck bag uh, and we go through and try and fill some of our folders. Now in today's video we'll be going through this bag and I'll be having a look through it all but I've done that a few times here on YouTube and it's very difficult to actually talk at the camera constantly. It's like being a radio host and I've no experience of doing that other than here on YouTube doing all of these things. So I'll be going through the bag and we'll be looking at the 50Ps and hopefully we're gonna find one of these ones which is a Kew Gardens 50P because that's gonna be worth, gosh, at least 1900 pounds at the moment. But we're gonna try and fill up some of these folders. Uh, but as we go, the topic of discussion as you join me today is gonna to be a little bit about what it's like to actually make videos here on YouTube and what it's like being a YouTuber. I'm not really a YouTuber in that sense because you know there are some much, much bigger YouTubers out there. By the way, this is my nice new coin folder. Uh, this is, uh, I realized when I was doing the coin hunting that some of the newer 50Ps that were uh, released were not in this old folder, so I've upgraded. This is my duplicates folder, which we'll still have, but this is the new folder, and you can see what we're missing there. So, whilst I'm no, nowhere near any kind of YouTuber, uh, I kind of do this for a bit of a living, um, combined with all of my hand-poured silver side of things, and. Uh, basically dabbling in the world of kind of bullion dealing and buying and selling silver coins and things like that. So I'm kind of a jack of all trades in that regard. And uh, I am kind of, you know, the YouTube channel, it brings in a little bit of revenue from AdSense each month, which is nice. And it's a nice little revenue stream to have in the background. Uh, but I thought I'd talk today a little bit about the stresses and strains of it. And before we get cracking, here's one straight off the bat, a... Beatrix Potter 50p and this one is Benjamin Bunny. So we've got Benjamin Bunnies already, but uh, you know, it's, it's still nice to find them. So yes, uh, oh, and look, it's a Beatrix Potter themed bag today. We've got Peter Rabbit. It's not the really good one. This is the second issue of the Peter Rabbits. Uh, so what's it like? There's another Peter Rabbit there. This, I'm not gonna stop for every single one. If there's one that we haven't seen before, then we'll have a look at it. Otherwise, we'll never get through and uh, we'll just forever be talking. That's the four minute mark. So this is a brilliant bag to get started with. I can't even get words in edgeways with myself here. So whilst I am, here we go, another one, Paddington. Whilst I am not a big YouTuber, I have 11 odd thousand subscribers and I've set myself a very kind of ambitious schedule uh, on YouTube. And we have four videos going out a week, sometimes five more or more, depending on what's come in, whether we've got some big unboxings. On the subject of big unboxings, by the way, there will be some huge unboxings coming probably next weekend at this rate, as far as I'm aware, uh, looking at all the schedules, and that's gonna be ridiculous. I'm fully expecting not to be able to get this parcel onto the good old faithful table here. It's probably gonna be unboxed on the floor. But that's one of the great things uh, that I like doing, and it's a piece of, um, Oh, that's uh, I think a new one that we haven't seen before but the uh, you know the actual unboxings that forms a quite a big part of my channel and it's a big laborious process but it's really really fun so coming up with all of these bits of content is I guess where I'm going with this little at ramble of a conversation you know being a being a youtuber is is hard being even if it's a small youtuber like this if you're doing it as a hobby then that's fine but if you're doing it sort of like myself where you want to keep growing it you want to you know I I'm within a realm of possibility of being able to kind of keep growing the channel such that in you know three, four, five years, we might have enough subscribers there that we get the YouTube silver play button, uh, we get uh, you know some really interesting stuff happening with YouTube, whereby we might even be able to sort of back off doing quite a few of the other bits of uh, kind of the laborious parts of life and just leaving that. And it kind of would act as a bit of a pension, not a sole uh, income earner. So if we can get this one in focus, this is the Bulwark of Jersey 50p and I'm not entirely sure that one's in my folders. I think that one's actually uh, a, it could be just the, the sort of Jersey 50p. I'm not sure that's legal tender in the UK, but anyway, it's a fun one to find. Um, so yeah, we're, we're within the realms of possibility of getting there with YouTube, but it's not easy, not easy at all. And for those of you out there who, 
you know, watch my videos, watch other videos, and you've always aspired. And I mean, I always did. When I was watching big uh, YouTubers out there, I thought, you know, they've got they've got their life. And you hear so many stories now of uh, of young people wanting to. Uh, essentially become YouTubers. That's their kind of career aspirations when they're young. Uh, not that I want to be a, you know, a Jake Paul or something like that, but to be able to make videos like this and earn a living from it is a pretty incredible thing. So, but getting there is difficult, another Peter Rabbit. Getting there is really difficult, especially when you set yourself a, uh, a four a week video schedule like I've done. Now there's so many different shapes and sizes of YouTube channels that can go through. Uh, and yeah, I would, recommend to anybody who's getting started uh, if you're juggling day jobs like I was at the start setting yourself a four week four videos a week schedule is it's nigh on impossible it really is you've got to come up with four different distinct videos every week perhaps on a different theme or topic uh, each time as well you know if you're doing unboxing videos or if you're doing coin roll hunting videos then that's I'm not saying it's easy by comparison because it's really not and part of it is being able to kind of talk at the camera uh, you know as if you're on radio basically talking to yourself so I'm sat here in my uh, in my living room my kitchen table talking to myself essentially at the camera and it's a really difficult process to get your head around and to actually do actually I put that one yeah that was the one we found wasn't it I put that one in the pile and um, it's one which you get a lot more used to as you go throughout, uh, you know, sitting here talking. And I've done it for now, what, two and a half years? And when I look back at some of my earliest videos, they're very cringeworthy. And I don't like going back and watching some of the earliest ones. So uh, if you want to laugh, go back and listen to some of the earliest videos because I don't have the best uh, kind of cohesion in my speaking. Another Benjamin Bunny. The Beatrix Potters are very common at the moment, I find. Uh, yeah, I didn't have very much cohesion in my talking and my style has definitely evolved and interestingly when I've met a few people out there in the community at coin fairs and such and we've filmed a few times they they talk about uh, how it's really interesting to see my kind of personality switch on when I become the character of Backyard Bullion. So yeah, I do have a little kind of character built in my head about Backyard Bullion, what Backyard Bullion is, who he is, what he does and how he works and it's not necessarily the true and real uh, me all of the time you know of course I try and be as honest as I can but there's also certain parts of my life which I can't reveal and talk about uh, here on YouTube with you fine people as much as I would love to that's a new one by the way the representation of the people act but I got an entire giant bag of those which we were uh, which we've been selling on the forum as well as over on eBay so what advice can I give to YouTubers out there or people out there who might be interested in starting a YouTube channel. Perseverance is an important aspect of this. If you are going to be doing this, you know, you're not, and you're starting from afresh, you're not going to have the luxury of, you know, a channel with loads of viewers and uh, views and AdSense. You know, AdSense is the thing that a lot of people don't like the idea of that, that, um, you know, there's adverts running on the videos. There's probably been one since I've been talking and there'll probably be another one coming up in the end. But YouTube is, is basically, it's a free thing for people to use. It's free for me to use as a creator. It's free for you guys to use as watchers. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that uh, has to be paid for and YouTube does that uh, essentially by advertising. So it's a necessity. But if you're a brand new YouTuber, it's very difficult to even get a foothold because of course YouTube is going to promote the channels which are monetized because they're going to show the adverts and people are going to watch more of your videos if you are monetized. So it's very difficult for a brand new YouTuber to get in on YouTube and to get any momentum. You really do have to put a lot of time and energy into it. And I think time and energy is my best advice to you if you are looking at getting into uh, kind of doing this more regularly. Don't think about it as earning money from the AdSense. Whilst that's very nice, it's just, you can't rely on it. And even if you do get to, you know, like even where I am, it's certainly nothing that you can retire on or just use as a permanent income. Uh, if anything, it's just a little bit of pocket money at the end of the day. And it does make a difference though, in my opinion. And when they changed that monetization rules, I felt very bad for a lot of the small creators. Cause I remember when I was getting started right at the very beginning. And when I got my first AdSense paycheck, which was like, eight months in because you get you have to get to a threshold before they even pay out uh you know it was really it was kind of cool it was like yeah that's that's brilliant i really enjoy that 
So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things though, you know, if you're going to get involved with it, have the passion for what it is rather than for the money because you're not going to make millions unless you get very, very lucky. And talking about getting lucky, it's not Kew Gardens, but it is a new one for my folder, for my brand new folder as well. Tale of Gloucester. Very, very cool. So we'll put that in the folder at the end of the day. We've still got a bunch of bags to get through. So uh, let's, I've got a few top tips. That's what I prepared. I've got a little crib sheet over here on the side for talking points, because I said earlier in the video, it's really hard to talk solidly at the camera for like 10 plus minutes. And when you're doing a video like this, where you really only get one take at it, because you know, we're ripping open bags here and we're uh, you know, looking at the 50Ps as they come, can't go and put them all back in bags. Uh, you know, it's really difficult to focus at the camera. So uh, yeah, talking and talking and talking is hard and uh, you can only kind of get better at it by doing. So top tips wise, what I would say is just keep at it, practice, get the feedback from community, you know, encourage people to basically come back. That's what you're, that's what you're after. So develop that personality is my advice to you. You know, got to give the people who are watching the video a reason to want to come back. Do they like you? Do they like your videos? Do they like what you're talking about? Uh, you know, I, whilst I wasn't very good at the start, I have always been pretty good at kind of public speaking and talking in front of people. It was a new kind of way of doing it on camera, but it was still something I was familiar with. So, you know, use the skills that you've got. If you haven't got them, they will come. It's just about learning uh, and, uh, you know, so basically evolving that skill over time. If you are going to try and get started, another really big top tip that I found, which was very helpful to help grow the channel, was to be regular and to let your uh, let your viewers, let your subscribers know what they can expect. So have a specific schedule of when you're uploading. I've got four a week plus a few extras here and there and they come on a Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday because that works best with my life and my schedule. You know, I can film quite a few videos ahead of time uh, either over the weekend or early in the week and then I can concentrate on the day jobs as it was or now the day job is pouring silver. So, you know, I can concentrate on other aspects of running the business, which is really, of course, very important. So have that schedule and it gives people the expectation. They go, oh, do you know what? I'm really looking forward to the next Backyard Bullying video. That's going to be on Wednesday and have different themed days. So you'll notice on my channel that every Wednesday is one of these kind of rambling, thought provoking videos. I call it Ponderous Wednesday. Every Friday is a uh, In Focus Friday episode. We've been doing that 125 weeks now. There we go. That's one of the better Peter Rabbits. That's the first one that came out and that one's Probably going for like three, four, five quid on eBay. So that's a pretty good find. Um, yeah, so just have, uh, you know, a specific type of series. If you can come up with something that would be fun that you can do once a week, every week, or every couple of weeks, depending on what your schedule is. You know, for myself, I try and keep all of my hand pulled silver type videos for a Sunday. Uh, Saturdays can be a little bit of anything. That's why we do things like this coin roll hunting here, coin reviews, creator, crafts and creators, which is another kind of uh, series. It's not going to necessarily be a weekly series, but you know we're we're developing that and having that as another thing that people will look forward to. They'll go, ah, when's the next crafts and creators coming out? Or oh, look, it's coming up to Sunday, so there'll be a hand poured silver day. And there's something for everybody, which is, I guess, another good thing which goes through uh, on my channel. You know, I do a lot of things about coins about silver coins, investing, bullion, hand pulled silver of course, numismatics, raw mint stuff, there's just something for everybody. So do bear that in mind. Hey look at that, a second tailor of Gloucester. Excellent stuff, I've got one now for each folder, even though that the old folder doesn't actually have a slot for it, which is a bit annoying, but anyway. So that's my kind of top tips for basically, well this is a different one, for being on YouTube. It's hard. Another thing to contend with, of course, is all of the kind of YouTube uh, interactions and management. So, you know, up uploading the videos is not that difficult, but maintaining the videos afterwards can be. If you get a video which does quite well and maybe it uh, goes a little bit viral, you get quite a lot of comments. And even if they don't go viral, I get probably 20, 30, 40 comments per video. And then if we get videos which go a little bit more viral, we get hundreds, literally hundreds of comments. I've got some videos with thousands of comments. So, and I try and reply to each and every one so that everybody's kind of getting that interaction with me. And I don't want to lose that, but I do appreciate that it's very difficult. It's getting more difficult the more uh, that the channel grows as well. 
So interact with your audience, that's another great thing which will help uh, grow the channel and keep people coming back and you know, spread the word. They might even share it on some social media. You know, they had a great conversation with Backyard Bullion or with whoever it might be on YouTube. You see, it's, it is an important thing. Anyway, look, I have rambled on long enough about what it's like to be on YouTube. I would love to know from you guys what your thoughts are. Do you do it? Have you got a small channel? If you have, I would be more than happy to help support and have a look and watch some of your videos. So do link your own channels if you've got one down in the comment section below. And if you uh, have any other top tips, if you are a YouTuber, if you're a bigger YouTuber than me, or if you're a big YouTuber uh, in the making, then do let me know your top tips down in the comment section as well about what you can add to this conversation, because it is, it's a hard life. It really is not easy. And then of course, there's, uh, there's another aspect which I haven't talked about, which maybe we'll talk about in more detail at some point, but you have to deal with maybe some people who don't like your content, some trolls and things, there'll inevitably be people who come along who don't like you, who don't like your content or don't like your opinions on various things. And it's quite difficult. You know, people will, they'll say horrible and nasty things. And I've, uh, I've lost count of the amount of people that I've blocked and banned from my channel for being, you know, nasty, racist, horrible, homophobic, um, anti-Semitic, just, you know, all of the above. There's just so many people who have bees in their bonnets about things in this world and they will always be there and they will always moan about certain things and there's a very very cool video which i always link to everybody and it was pans perth actually who first linked it when there was uh some issues over on the silver forum with somebody who was not very happy uh shall we say and it's uh, from a chat called Professor Elemental who sings a song, Please Don't Feed the Trolls. I'll link it down below. I always link that video to anyone who comes on and is basically a bully or a troll because there's no place for them in my in my channel, in my world. I just don't, I don't think it's, uh, you know, a very, gives it absolutely zero credibility as a human being if all you do is you come on the internet and shout at people and being, being rude and being a troll. I just don't think it, there's any place in this world for that. And it's a sad fact of the internet that it does happen quite a lot. Another piece of rabbit there. So uh, that's something to factor in if you're if you're uh, you know sensitive to uh, negativity and comments and feedback like that. Of course, there you know there's aspects of another Taylor of Gloucester. That's a good one. Uh, you know, there's obviously aspects of taking on board feedback that you might get from uh, you know people. If you, yeah, obviously affect it affects you sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to hear. But if it's just plain up old bullying, then in my opinion, there's absolutely no place for it. So, and I'm the first to always, uh, you know, put my hands up and say I made a mistake if I did. Uh, a prime example of that is the uh, the video I did about Venezuela, which has over 140,000 views at the moment, and I got one fundamental thing wrong. I pronounced the currency uh, Bolivia rather than Bolivar, and the amount of people who just like. Uh, you know, basically made trolly, horrible comments about that. You know, yeah, I made a mistake. So what? Like, get on with it. Like, it's just ridiculous. So, there was even a chap the other day who was uh, who was moaning at me about the fact that I'd bite my fingernails, and he was like, "Before you make any opinions here on YouTube, take care of your fingernails." And whilst it's fine for people to feedback that I bite my nails, and that, oh, another swimming one there as well, that it might not be very pleasant for people to look at. Well, yeah, I mean, I bite my nails. A lot of people bite their nails. I don't want somebody to bully me or bully someone else about the way that they you know, treat their body or the things they do with their body. That's their choice and it's my choice that I bite my nails. And if it puts somebody off, do you know what? That's fine and I'm sorry that it does, but ultimately I am who I am and I bite my nails and that's kind of part of, part of it, part of life. I've always bitten my nails as well since I was a young child. So uh, yeah, do you know what? If somebody's gonna moan about it, then fine, let them moan about it. I'm just not going to rise to that response basically is what I'm trying to say. So we are nearly at the end of the bag. Anyway, look, guys, I've been rambling now for close to 20 minutes about YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed that ramble. And if any of you are sitting back and listening to this ramble for 20 plus minutes, thank you. That's very generous to give so much of your time to listen to me ramble on. And your special treat is that you get to see right at the end of the video where we can put some of the 50Ps that we found into the new coin folder. Got one bag to do after this, and then we'll have a quick look through. There's actually quite a lot in this bag. I'm very impressed that, uh, or in this giant bag, there's quite a lot of 50Ps. The hit rate has been exceptionally good in this particular bag. So perhaps I might make a follow-up video with all of these 
coins that we found because there's, um, there's quite a lot of them, almost too many to go through. Uh, so we might have a sneaky second video at some point uh, showing all of these 50Ps that we have found. But um, yes, thank you for watching this far if you have. You're kind of the hardcore viewers, the uh, the backyard bullion uh, favourites, I suppose. You know, you always watch the end, so a big thank you. And uh, I really appreciate it. Make sure that if you have not done so already, you hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos like this, then let me know by subscribing. And if you have not done so already and you are a subscriber, hit that little alarm bell because you'll get a notification when I upload future videos. Now, we have one last thing to do before we finish, and that is to put in a few of these 50Ps. If I can even open the folder, it's very difficult to open. There we go. So we have the Taylor of Gloucester. We had a couple of them come out, and that one is going straight in here. So it's good to add another coin to the master folder. Now that Taylor of Gloucester, sadly, there is no slot in the old folder, but I do remember seeing somewhere in here, yep, there's one of them, we've got the Suffragettes Movement 50p, which is going in nicely there. So that is another one in the duplicates folder down, which is very cool. And I believe we've got an NHS 50p as well, so let's just have a quick look, see if we can find that one. Yep, yeah. or was it the... No, that's not the one, that was actually the Be Prepared the Scouts. I'm pretty sure we found an NHS one. Or maybe we didn't, maybe I was just imagining it. I can't see it. If it's on the table and you're screaming at the screen going, it's right there, then I do apologise. Nope, I think I was mistaken, we did not have that one. So we're still short of a few in the duplicates folder, so we'll probably do another one of these 50p coin hunts at some point. In fact, I know we will because I quite enjoy them. Uh, we've still got some holes here in these. So if anybody's got some of these that they'd like to do a trade for any of these special ones that have come out today, then do let me know. Otherwise, thank you one and all for watching. This is a norm not normally as long a video as I do. So uh, thank you for putting up with me and enjoying it. I hope you did. Look at that, there's a Christopher Ryan size sitting right on top of the pile that I missed. We'll put that over there as well. Thank you, one and all. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend ahead. And as always, please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.